In this presentation, we're going to look at stack with the help of assembly language programming. Sometimes we underestimate the need for learning assembly language. This is a snippet from one of the Intel white papers which explains the need of learning assembly language. So by understanding the capabilities of the architecture, learning how to read an assembly listing and becoming familiar with common compiler transformation, you'll have less problem with your debugging and performance analysis. Also, assembly language is required to understand certain concepts in the language. Certain optimization, certain paradigms like stack, thread, thread synchronization, you need to know assembly language. So here is a quick recap from the previous presentation on assembly language. So EAX register mostly general purpose, sometimes called the result of some of the operations like add. A return value is normally kept in EAX. EIP always contains the address of next instruction which is going to execute. ESP always point to the top of the stack which we're going to explain later in this presentation. EBP points to the base of the stack frame. EBX and EDX are normally general purpose registers. ECX, EDI, ESI are also mostly general purpose registers, but some instruction use them in special purpose scenarios. We are not discussing floating point, MM, XMM, etc. So again recap. So instructions are commands to CPU. You can have mostly 0, 1 or 2 arguments to an instruction or operands to an instruction. In very rare case you have more arguments as well. Some arguments are implicit, some arguments are explicit. For example in the case pop and push, ESP or the stack pointer is an implicit argument. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see a demo how we can execute a simple assembly language program in Visual Studio. And we're going to look at the program in a tool called WinDebug. We'll be concentrating on move, push and pop in this example. So we have a variable int a up here. And we have a keyword underscore underscore a sum and I have a curly braces here and I have a curly braces here. In between this curly braces I have assembly instruction. So what what I'm telling to the compiler by giving this underscore underscore ASM is what follows here is not C programming language but assembly programming language. So this is a feature of the C compiler we are using. So this is how you mix assembly and C. So this is a very powerful feature of C programming language. You can mix assembly language as well. I am saving EAX and EBX here. Then I am moving 100 to EAX, then 200 to EBX, adding each other and moving it back to A and retrieving the saved variables here by popping it out. So it's a very simple program. So let's see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint up here and start debugging. So a couple of things I'm going to observe here is the registers up here. So if you are not able to see registers what you can do is Windows registers or you can press alt 5. What we're going to do first is push EAX to the stack. So we need to observe one more thing to understand this program which is a stack. So I'm copying the stack pointer debug windows memory so stack is nothing but memory. So along with the registers I'm going to observe the stack as well. In the memory what I'm interested in is stack. So this is my stack. So this is a stack pointer. So if you look at this 
ESP register, you will understand that it is 0019F870, the same value. So this is the content of the stack at the moment in the memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push EAX into the stack. So stack is pointing here at the moment. So let's see what are the things which changes. EAX is not going to change in this operation. ESP is going to change in this operation. And the memory, the stack is going to change as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F10. So if you look carefully up here, you will see E8, 5, 6, 9, 6 and double zero. Pretty much this is given in the reverse order. So that is how it is saved in the memory. And you can see that this is red and it has changed four bytes less because the stack grows downwards. So push ABX. So again the stack got decremented. So it was 6C, it became 68. So again four bytes less. EIB changed as well because our instruction changed. Instruction is pointing to a different place now. So if you look carefully here, you can see EBX here in the stack. It came here. So we pushed EBX onto the stack. Now what we are doing, we are moving 100 and 200 to EX and EBX respectively. So only change going to happen is EX and EBX. So I'm going to press F10 again. So EX became 64 in hex, which is 100. EBX became C8, which is 200. Now I'm going to add EX and EBX and going to put the result into EAX. So the result of addition comes into the EAX register. So I'm going to add 100 and 200 going to press F10. So EAX became 1 to C which I assume it is 300. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the result to the variable A up here. The result is in EAX which is 1 to C. I'm going to copy that 1 to C into a. So let's see the value of A at the moment. So for that I'm going to get a watch window. So I got a watch window up here and at the moment A is not initialized so it contains some junk value at the moment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute F10 again. So now A contains 300 which is nothing but the 1 to C. If you look at the hexadecimal version it is 1 to C. So now I'm going to pop the value which I saved here. I was using EX and EBX before using a register it's always good to save that register. Not all the registers you need to save but it's it's a good practice. So in this case, I'm going to retrieve EBX. So now what is the value EBX contains? EBX contains 200 and EX contains 300. So previously it was 00, 0 and some other value here. So we are going to retrieve those values. What are the registers going to change is EBX and ESP in this pop instruction. Let's see that. I'm going to press F10. So that happened. So EBX changed to 00, zero which was the value which we pushed before. And the stack pointer also changed back to 6C from 68. 
so stack is kind of unwinding this was the initial value of the stack and this was the initial value of EAX what we have seen in this small example is the basic working of stack pointer the basic working of stack memory and how to use assembly language instructions in C programming language now let's go back to our slides so a little bit more information about the stack we were discussing so stack is specific to a thread so what is a thread thread can be viewed as a line of instructions or as guarantee to execute in the order we give I'm not going into the details of this particular statement but when we discuss multi-threading it will make more sense to you what this statement really means so currently there is something called thread which is a line of instruction and stack is always associated with a thread in Windows stack is just a piece of memory as we discussed always ESP point to the top of the stack stack has base and limit base is the starting address of the stack in x86 platform stack grows downwards which means that the highest possible value of ESP is the base and limit is the lowest possible value of ESP sometimes it causes confusion but once you understand the concept it's very simple so now what is the use of the stack all the local variables are allocated in the stack allocation is equal to decrementing the stack pointer and nothing else so a definition of a stack variable int a of 100 an array of 100 does nothing but subtract the stack pointer by 400 bytes yeah, there can be some compiler optimization which optimize this but in general this is correct stack is also used for passing arguments to a function in certain calling convention like C calling convention and standard calling convention in all type of calling convention stack is used for passing arguments if the argument is more than a certain number in the Microsoft C C++ compiler mostly for the 32 bit code EBP register is used as base from which offsets are derived for arguments and local variables so we're gonna see that next the 64 bit in Windows doesn't follow any of the rules which we have discussed it is kind of a fast calling convention in which we pass arguments via registers so the concept of non-volatile registers so non-volatile registers are registers which keeps their value across stack frames which means that if you are going to use a, a non-volatile register you have to save that register before using it it's more of a compiler rule rather than rule from the CPU for example ESP and EBP are non-volatile registers in standard and C calling convention in Microsoft compilers in a compiler like GCC or something else it can be different but ESP is mostly stack pointer and it's always non-volatile you have to make sure that the same value of ESP is kept when you call a function and when you return from that function so we are going to see how stack works use of ESP EBP local variables arguments passed prolog and epilog of a function and the growth of stack downwards so we have a small program up here which add two numbers pretty similar to the assembly equivalent we have done before in this uh, we have a function call which takes two arguments so we're going to look at the prolog epilog etc of this particular function so let's go to the disassembly of this particular code 
So this is the function call up here. So arguments are pushed through the the stack at the moment. So you can see arguments are pushed from right to left. So push 200 and push 100. And now we are calling the function up here. So it's a function. This is a function pointer which we are calling. So if you look at the stack, stack will change as we have seen before when we push things. As well as the memory will change as we push things. So I'm going to look at the memory. Copy the stack memory. I'm going to look at the stack memory. So this is the top of the stack. So I'm going to press F10. So the stack pointer has changed, as you can see here. And here we got C8, which is 200. Now we are expecting 100 up here. So we got 100 up here. And we got ESP changed. ESP got decremented. Now what we're going to do? We're going to change the EIP to this particular value. So I'm going to press F11 instead of F10. So the EIP got changed to the function. So EIP is this particular value. It's not the next instruction in the previous case. So here, these two instructions are called function prelog. It is saving the EBP register and copying the ESP register to EBP. It is called base pointer. So this is more or less an optimization. So this will organize things a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to access everything with the help of EBP. Unfortunately, Visual Studio is not showing that. So we will see this particular program in WinDebug after this exercise to see how EBP is being used throughout here. So this A, B, C, etc. is being accessed through EBP actually. So then only you will understand the meaning of these two instructions. So we have a push ECX here. If you carefully look here, we don't have any ECX further up here. So then why we are pushing ECX? We are not going to use it. The reason why we are pushing this ECX is not to save ECX but to decrement the stack pointer, to allocate memory for this particular variable. That's why we are doing a push. So we could have subtracted ESP 4 bytes, but we used push ECX because push ECX is faster than subtracting 4 from ESP. So it's a faster instruction. So that's why we use push ECX. So this is again an optimization. So I'm going through those instructions. So I'm saving the ESP to EBP, allocating a local variable in C. I'm copying A to EAX and adding B to EX. So now EX contains a result. I'm copying it back to C. So return value is always kept on EX. 
so I'm copying it back to EX and now it's the function epilog so I'm doing the reverse of what I have done here this is the reverse of that so moving ESP to the previous value which is saved in the EBP then restoring the value of EBP and returning from the function so returning is RET is kind of exact opposite to the call instruction so now I'm adding ESP 8 why I'm doing is because I wanted to reverse this allocation which I have done on the stack so I have decremented the stack pointer by 8 when I did this to instruction so I am compensating it here by adding ESP 8 the rest of the instruction is part of the main if you want you can have a detailed look now what we're going to do is to understand to better understand the use of EBP we are going to look this program in WinDebug so if you are doing this particular exercise you don't have to do this part because I have not given any formal introduction to this particular tool and what you can do is you can concentrate on my explanation and you can try to understand what I'm saying so I'm going to press F10 again just like in Visual Studio so my execution is currently here in this highlighted statement now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F11 so I gone into this particular function which I was planning to execute so I'm up here so this is a function so to see the assembly equivalent of this particular function there is a command called uf so this is the assembly equivalent of the function so this is a little bit different from what we were seeing in Visual Studio so if you look carefully you will understand the similarity so this three instruction we have seen push ebp move ebp comma esp so this is the plug so we have discussed so far what this is so this is also exact same instruction we have seen push ecx so here you can see some difference instead of a it is ebp plus 8 instead of B it is EBP plus 0 C instead of C it is EBP minus 4 again EBP minus 4 here so let's see what is this so EBP plus 8 so anything EBP plus is the argument which is passed so EBB plus 8 is the first argument which is passed EBB plus 0 C is the second argument which is passed so we know that EBB contains ESP at the moment and when we access EBB plus 8 we are accessing the stack variables here anything EBP minus EBP minus 4 in this case is referring to this particular variable here which is the C up here so EBP minus 4 is a local variable anything minus EBP is local variable this is the instruction which does EBP minus 4 in this case which is allocating this particular variable So Visual Studio is optimizing or making our task easier by converting this 
actual EBP offset to variable names. That's why we need a WinDebug to understand what is going behind the scenes. So all you have to understand is if there is no frame pointer optimization which means that EBP is used for maintaining the stack frame or accessing the stack variables EBP plus anything is arguments passed on the stack and EBP minus anything EBP minus X is always the local variables so now let me introduce the concept of stack frame. So a stack frame of a function is the arguments passed to the function plus the return address of the function plus saved EBP plus local variables. So stack frame is a region of memory inside the stack. To see the stack frame of this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a DC on the ESB register. What I have done is I'm viewing the raw memory view which we have seen in Visual Studio. This can be done in Visual Studio as well. The raw memory dump. This is equivalent to the memory window of Visual Studio what we are seeing currently. So this is the stop of the stack at the moment this is a result of addition which is in the variable C this is the saved EBP on the stack which has done in this particular instruction this is the return address this and this is the argument passed so there were two push instructions to pass the argument then we did the call to save the return address and jump to the address given to the call instruction then we saved our EBP here then we did the addition and modified the stack up here so to see if this is a return address what we can do is I can do a U up here so if you can see this is our main if you remember these are the instruction so this is the instruction we should return so add ESP8 and rest of the instructions in the main so we have seen how EBP works and what is a stack frame now let's go back to our slides so now I'm going to introduce a very important concept very simple to understand as well if you have understood what you have discussed so far called call stack call stack is a logical view of function calls so one function calls another function calls another function the stack of function call is called call stack or stack backtrace each frame in a call stack is called stack frame which we have seen which contains arguments passed to the function return address of the function saved EBP and the local variables saved EBP is an optional depends on the calling convention compiler optimization etc the other things are always there arguments return address and local variables is always on the stack frame if it is applicable to that particular function. A call stack is the most important information when you debug a production code or stack backtrace in, in some terminology. Now again we have a small program up here in Visual Studio to introduce the concept of call stack or stack backtrace. So we have four functions up here. One, two, three, and four. It doesn't do much other than calling other functions. So function one calls function two, function two calls function three, and function three calls function four. Function four doesn't do much. Allocate a variable and 
returns regular variable. From the main we call function 1 to initiate the chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put breakpoint on all these functions. So we have breakpoint on all these functions including main and we're going to look at the call stack when we debug. So let me bring up the call stack window. So this is a call stack window. So this function called our main. From the main we are going to call this particular one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F10. So we have called fun one we have fun one on the top of the call stack now I'm going to press F5 block into fun 2 and if you look at the top of the stack we have fun 2 again fun 3 and at last fun 4 so you can see it's a stack so one over the other So now I'm going to put a breakpoint on the return of each function to see how it decrements. So I'm going to press F5 again. So now one of the stack frame got unwound. Again F10, next one got unwound. Next one and finally we are in the main. So it's a very simple concept, nothing to explain. So one function calls the other and we get a stack of functions. So each frame, so this is called a frame, each frame is called a stack frame. And we have explained what are the contents of a stack frame before. It is the arguments passed, sometimes it's the EBP register saved on the stack, your local variables, your return address. Now let's go back to the slides. So we have seen what is called stack and a stack frame. That brings us to the summary of this presentation. Certain concepts like calling convention, optimization, thread synchronization cannot be completely understood without the knowledge of assembly language. We have discussed very less, in fact not even 10% of Intel x86 assembly language instructions. But the good news is what we have learned so far is going to be more than 90% of the code we will see in a daily basis. So probably all this is what we are going to require. So thank you very much.